Okay, this is a very quick tour of how to use a chart uh, for planning for diving. So on the chart, anything that's in yellow is land, everything in white is the sea. And then in between, you'll see that there's a blue fringe, a dark blue fringe, and a light blue fringe. The dark blue fringe extends from the seashore out to the 10 meter mark. The light blue goes from the 10 meter mark to the 20 meter mark. Anything in green, which you can see here in the Helford River, indicates uh, a location where it will dry out at low tide. On the chart, you will see there are numbers. These are the depths and they are in meters, but they are reduced to the astronomically lowest tide that you could get and so you have to add the tide, um, the height of the tide on top of these figures to get the true depth. There are features. First of all just here it indicates a cardinal buoy. Now this is a safety buoy and this buoy is telling you and telling shipping to stay to the east of it. If you went on the inside here you would run across the manacle reef. So it's protecting shipping from the manacles. Many ships have gone through there and have foundered. There are also things called tidal diamonds here in purple. Uh, this one is G and that is a position where the tidal information is known for various states of the tide. On the right hand side and the left hand side is the latitude scale. This runs from the equator, in our case, to the north, to the North Pole. On the scale, you'll see that is, on this particular chart, is 49 degrees, 50 minutes. Just here is 55 minutes. And you'll see in between, the segments go white, gray, white, gray, white. So each of these segments are worth one minute. And one minute is one nautical mile. Uh, each of these segments can also be subdivided down into decimals, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and so on. And this is used for finding the latitude position fixing. The other important thing about the latitude scale is that the distance of every minute is the same, whether it's near the equator or at the North Pole. So the latitude scale is the only scale that you use to measure distance. The longitude scale looks similar in as much that if I look along the scale here it says 4 degrees 50 minutes and there's 55 minutes. You'll notice that the distance between there and there is very different to the distance on the latitude scale and that's because the longitude scale varies in distance for every minute as it moves between the equator and the North Pole. It basically gets thinner as it goes towards the North Pole. But the principle is exactly the same, is that each minute is goes white, grey, white, grey, white. So I've got four degrees, 50 minutes there, 55 minutes there, and this is to the west of Greenwich. Just here is the Compass Rose. The outer part of the compass rose shows the true bearing, which is points and it aligns with the grid lines on the chart. So that's naught degrees, but that's not where magnetic north is. Magnetic north is varying all the time. So the inner circle shows the magnetic direction, but this is only true for the, uh, the time that this particular chart was um, printed. Uh, on the line here, it tells you the variation per year, whether it's easterly or westerly. And this is where the North Pole is moving slowly towards true north, in actual fact, um, in this case. And um, if you wanted to work out the real magnetic uh, bearing, you would have to do a calculation of the vari variation here, the yearly variation and add it or subtract it to the true bearing. 
For short distances, we don't really need to worry about that. Looking down in the right hand corner is the tidal stream table. Uh, on the left hand side is a description of how to use this table. Each one of these diamonds is a position on the chart and uh, it is referenced to, in this particular case, tidal streams refer to high water at Plymouth. And we'll look at that again a little bit later. So let's find the position of this wreck here, which is the Volnay. Uh, the way we do that is we put one leg of the dividers on the Volnay and the other on the grid line, one of these grid lines here. Move up to the scale at the very top, the longitude scale, and you can see we've got five degrees, zero minutes there. One, two, three, three point eight five minutes. And we are west of Greenwich, so it would be described as five degrees, three point eight five minutes west. That's the longitude. Now let's find the latitude. And the way we can do that in a similar vein is one leg onto the direct, the other one onto one of the chart grid lines, bring it across to the scale, like that, and read it off. So this time we've got 50 degrees, there's five minutes, so it's 50 degrees, one, two, three, four minutes, point four. So the answer would be 50 degrees, 4.4 minutes, and we're north of the equator, so it's north. Now as an example, supposing we want to know what the current will be doing over that wreck. The nearest tidal diamond is this one just here, and that's G. In the bottom right hand corner of this chart is a thing called the tidal stream table. And this is very important. Each one of these diamonds, there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, are positions on this chart where the tidal stream information is known. This table is referenced to high water Plymouth, and Plymouth is known as a standard port, and it doesn't actually have to be on this chart. On the left-hand side here, is a description of how the table works. What it shows in the first column is this is the high water time here. It then shows every hour before high water at Plymouth and every hour after high water at Plymouth. The second column here shows the direction, the true bearing that the current is going. The next we have two columns. The first one shows the strength of the tide, the strength of the current that is, in knots uh, for spring tides. The second one shows the strength of the current in knots for neap. So we saw diamond G up there and this is diamond G here. So let's just, as a for instance, say that we want to know the state of the current at two hours after high water at Plymouth. We go to G, we come down to plus two just here, and we would read off that the current would be going 202 degrees. Now, depending whether it's springs or neaps, it would either have a strength of 0.4 of a knot or 0.2 of a knot. So finally, how do you find the course bearing and the distance from an object? Well, let's take an example of say this wreck here, and I want to find the course and the bearing to Nair's point, which is just there. The way we do it is using parallel rulers. And I line up the leading edge of the rule on the wreck and Nair's point, holding down one side, just walk the other rule over to the compass rose and read off on the outer ring, which is 
281 degrees true. Now, if you want a, a compass bearing, then you obviously need to add magnetic variation, which is dealt with on the inner circle. Second way of doing it is using a thing called a Portland plotter. It has a swivel uh, disc in the middle with um, compass bearings on it and a marker here and a course direction. And we lay it onto the chart. We again line up the wreck with Nair's point, swivel the uh, centerpiece round so that the lines here line up with the grid lines on the chart, which is about there, and again read off 281 degrees. Now this has easterly and westerly magnetic variation on it, so if you happen to know that there was 6 degrees west variation, all you have to do is come round on this scale here and of course it would read 287 degrees. Now how do you get the distance? Well, using your dividers, you make one leg on the wreck, the other leg on Nair's point, and you bring it over to the latitude scale, marking it down and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven point eight minutes. And each minute is worth a nautical mile. So that's 7.8 nautical miles away. So finally, how do you work out the depth that you're diving? Well, the way that you do that is to use a local port, which is actually on the chart. And let's take it for instance, uh, just here is Coverack. So if I were to look up Coverack's uh, tide, and it told me on this particular day that high water was at 10 o'clock in the morning and the tidal height was, let's say six meters. The low water then would be something like um, 1600 in the afternoon and maybe it's two meters. And we want to know what the uh, depth of water would be at um, one o'clock in the afternoon, 1300. Well, that will be halfway between two meters and six meters, which is of course, four meters. So I would add four meters tied to any depth on, shown on this chart. And that's how you do it. Hopefully you enjoyed that.